Hello everyone. Well, I'm really pleased that this box has finally turned up because it's been on quite a journey. It originated in Germany, then it went over to the United States of America and I purchased it from Amazon and it left Amazon, the facility in Amazon, and then went to Florida. And then from Florida, it went to Missouri and from Missouri, it went to Wisconsin and then it went to the United Kingdom and finally it's arrived here in Yorkshire. What is it? Well, we know what it is. It's a Kutcher Ranger upright vacuum. So without any further ado, let's get it open. SIBO launched their BP60 last year, I believe, or possibly the year before. That's their first cordless upright vacuum cleaner with a soft case around the dust bag. It's a dirty fan design or direct air. This is a mains powered version, but it's branded Karcher. In the UK and Europe, SIBO cannot sell the equivalent model of this that I'm about to show you. And I believe it's down to some EU regulations. It could be down to filtration, noise level, or some other silly rule that stops SIBO from selling it in the country they're made and exporting them to the UK and Europe. Despite the fact that the UK left the EU, we're still under all their rules and regulations, so I don't know what the point of leaving was. It seems to have got worse by design. But anyway, because I can't actually buy the SIBO version of this in the UK, I've had to import this Karcher branded one from Amazon in the United States, but it was on a good deal. It was $200. Of course, I had to pay shipping and import charges. There is a version, a SIBO branded version of this, a mains powered soft bodied cleaner that I believe you've just got in Canada and the USA, but we cannot buy that at the moment in the UK. So I thought when I saw this, I thought I'd buy it. Now this might have been, here's the soft case. I don't know if this has been opened because it might have had some customs checks. Here's one dust bag. I've actually got a pack of dust bags for this because the bags for the cordless version that we can buy in this country are the same bags. And also the brush roll is the same brush roll used on the Felix, the ET1 Powerhead and the X series uprights. So we've got three parts, well, two parts so far. I'm hoping, let's move that out of the way. I'm hoping the handle is underneath. Please be in here, good. The handle and the mains cable. So here's the handle, the handle grip. A very bright cable. I don't think this is a very long cable. It's not 10 meters. I'll put all the details and specification under the video plus an affiliated Amazon link if you want to check it out. But yeah, that's quite a short cable. And we also have some screws enabling us to attach the soft case body and the handle to the machine. Okay, first thing to do, let's assemble this Karcher Professional Vacuum. Before I fit the soft case to the cleaner, I'll point out the air path here that takes the dirt from the cleaner head up to the dust bag. That can become displaced if you have to reassemble the machine. This part here with the seals on does come out. So if you have to take the soft case off, you might find that that is actually stuck on the underside of the bag housing. So make sure that that's located first. It'll only go in one way with the narrower side down. Next to it is the socket that we plug the mains cable in. And here is the support for the bag housing where we will fit a screw through into here. Now, one thing I've noticed, and I was struggling, this is a second or third take, I was struggling putting the bag housing onto the cleaner. And I've discovered why. So I'll just point this out in case you have this problem. This is the bottom of the bag housing. So in here is where we the support goes and then you put the first screw in here is the air duct path but here 
there is a blanking piece that shouldn't be there as far as I can tell if this was the cordless version there would be a blanking piece there because you don't need the cord going up through the handle and obviously to the uh, plug at the end so I was wondering why that wasn't going on so that needs to be removed and I can't see anything in the instructions that tells you that you should remove that so perhaps I've got the wrong bag I'm not sure it will fit but I'm going to have to push it out and it looks like I'll have to push it out from the underside it's, it is nearly there right there we go so I'm going to remove that and now we do have the hole enabling the little socket to be accessed when you need to plug it in so yeah it's a bit odd okay so now I can locate the soft case into the unit just make sure the end of the zip isn't sticking out just push that in and then just gently jiggle it slightly from side to side until it sits fully home because if it's not properly inserted we won't be able to get the screw in this is quite awkward I've done a few takes of this to be honest okay right I think it's fully located so now we insert one of the three long screws into the screw hole, screw hole at the bottom of the bag compartment just going to do it by hand I think it's going just needed that extra little push right okay working up quite a sweat here assembling this I believe SIBO with their cordless version certainly in the UK they do offer a little short stubbly screwdriver and I can see why now because this is awkward at an angle I don't want to push it further the um, the flap from the bag housing right it's nearly there okay that's part of the assembly completed here we can see the electrical connection for the mains cable so I've no idea why my version had a blanking piece at the bottom of the bag housing because if that was covered up there's no way I could have plugged in the mains cable to the machine so fortunately we've worked that out so if yours has a blanking piece over this part you need to remove it before assembling the bag housing to the main unit next we need to insert the handle grip into the handle tube it goes this way on so the two holes here at the bottom and a single hole here at the top so locate the grip into the top of the handle tube and you can see the hole needs to line up with the hole on the handle grip then you use the smallest screw make sure that the hole is still lined up insert the screw and hand tighten it as much as you can just to make sure it's not cross threaded that seems okay and then tighten it up using a Phillips screwdriver don't over tighten that's about right we now need to insert the handle starting at the top of the soft case and pushing it into the handle support inside the bag compartment make sure that the two holes line up and then we can insert the remaining longer screws again by hand tighten it as much as you can by hand if there's any resistance take out the screw and try again you should be able to get most of the way by hand and then we need to take the screwdriver again tighten up both screws don't over tighten that's about it a little bit more on the bottom one so that's the handle fitted to the cleaner this bit of trim at the top of the bag housing isn't quite sitting properly home so just need to click it into place you can hear it click let's make sure it's fitted at the back yep that seems fine 
This is the cable entry point which we need to open so push it from the inside and it hinges open like that and then we can insert the cable obviously this end into the hole and feed it down to the base of the bag housing. We can now take the plug and insert it into the connection at the bottom. It'll only go in one way. So we just need to push that down. That's it. Make sure that's firmly seated. We now need to guide the cable through these clips. So coil the cable around this part here first. And that acts as a strain relief. As you're doing that, make sure you're not pulling the plug out. And then the cable goes up and into this clip. It's quite a thick cable, so it's a bit tricky. This is probably the most awkward vacuum I've ever assembled on my channel. There we are. So now we need to insert it into this upper clip. Let's push it in until it fits in place. There we are. So that's the cable as it should be. And where the cable exits the cleaner at the top of the bag housing, we just need to close the cover. You'll see there's a little cutout here for the cable. So make sure the cable's in that back corner. And then you can just push down the cover like so. Next, we need to open the flap at the back of the handle. There's a little catch. So just push that down and then the flap will open. Take the cable, insert it under the clip here, just loosely, and then we can take the cable and loop it over the strain relief here at the top. We'll just loosen it a little bit more. Close the cover, and then we'll put that back. Yeah, that's better. You want it, you don't want it tight. You do want there to be a little bit of slack in the cable. But now we've got it fitted, so the strain relief is fitted to the handle. So if you tug that during cleaning, it should protect the cable from becoming damaged. So that is assembly finally completed. And to store the cable, there's a hook here at the bottom of the handle that does rotate. So you can rotate it upwards to release the cable in one go. But to wind up the cable, you need to make sure the hook is down and then you can loosely wrap the cable around the lower and the upper hook on the back of the handle. It's, it's a very thick industrial cable, thicker than a domestic version, but it is quite short for a commercial vacuum cleaner. And then at the plug end, you see we've got a little clip, so you can secure that to the rest of the cable. And there, finally, we have a fully assembled vacuum cleaner. Before I can actually use this cleaner, of course, I need to fit the dust bag. So open up the front cover. And we need to put the bag collar just under here. There's a little receptacle for it. This flap here you use when you take the bag out. It just closes off the cover to stop dust and dirt coming out of the bag. So it just goes into the grooves at the bottom and you push it forward and that's it, just clicks into place under this little black catch and to remove it, you just push up the catch and take the bag out. So pretty quick, simple bag change. Before you zip up, make sure the bag is tucked nicely in and then we can do up both zips. So we're almost ready to use the machine. I say almost ready because I've just noticed that the motor hood isn't properly fitted to the chassis of the cleaner. Now I could push that in and hope it clicks into place, but I don't want to risk breaking it. So I'm going to remove the motor hood and reassemble it. And hopefully that bit of bowed plastic will click back in where it should be. To remove the motor hood, you're going to need a Torx T20 screwdriver. As far as I can tell, there are only two screws we have to remove. I wasn't planning on 
showing you the motor in this video but I want to make sure it's properly fitted right I think I've loosened them enough so hopefully we should be able to one screws come out come away two screws they've come out but right, it might be more than two screws it is more it's it's four so there's two more at the back again their torques 20 in fact yeah there's two more so with any luck after I've undone this screw I'm not having a good time fortunately due to the power of editing this video isn't looking as bad as my recording experience I've had all sorts of interruptions dogs barking people coming in the room things going wrong so <laughs> if this machine doesn't work when I switch it on I'm not going to be too happy right yes there we are it's four now I've got to be careful because it's there's a lip here and some tabs there we go right so here is the inside of the Kartra Ranger it's slightly reminiscent of a Hoover Turbo Power or what a Hoover Turbo Power might have looked like if the Hoover company was still producing decent quality vacuum cleaners so we do have a bit of a circuit board the motors here got a bit of a seal and this is the fan impeller that creates the suction here's the suction path made in Germany written all over it and this has two belts at the side both toothed so one belt goes from the motor and drives the impeller it's a plastic fan so you need to be careful not to pick up hard or sharp objects with this machine because if you break any of the veins on the fan it'll unbalance it and it'll be really loud and it won't work properly so obviously in a commercial environment the cleaners aren't too bothered what they run over um, so I can see possibly in a commercial environment with a plastic fan these might break possibly they're very very new even the cordless ones quite new so I don't know how they perform sort of in the field so to speak but I'm sure that assembly will be available as a spare part I mean all the parts will be available at least with SIBO you can buy all the parts for even their older machines and actually repair them unlike a lot of these modern Chinese made cleaners so yeah two belts so one belt drives the impeller the fan and the other belt here drives the brush roll so there you go quick look inside but now I need to reassemble the motor hood let's locate it ah oh, hang on right it doesn't it's not ah oh, there we are that's it this I know I'm not going to like this this and oh, that's not yeah, I, yeah, I mean, yeah it's very stiff that is a ridiculous place for the on off switch it might have increased production costs and final value costs of the machine if they were to put the switch on the handle or the top of the bag housing which would have been preferable I know this switch because I've got it on my SIBO Evolution which I don't think you've seen I've had it years I've only used it in a dem in a unboxing video which I've lost I'll show that to you uh, at some point the SIBO Evolution or in the USA the SIBO Mechanical has this same side foot switch and it is really awkward I don't like it um, I can tell you that now and you you will not like it I can guarantee you'll that's one thing you will not like about this cleaner as you can see the Karcher Ranger uses the same very stiff brush roll that the SIBO Felix the X series and the ET1 Powerhead uses so tried and tested brush roll grooms the carpet really well excellent at pet hair pickup and like all other SIBO cleaners that have this brush roll it's easy to remove without a screwdriver there's a little end cap here it just moves upwards that comes off and the brush roll slides out if you need to cut hair off it or give it a clean excellent brush rolls and 
as I said, it's a standard brush roll for SIBO uprights and power heads. You can get a softer roller as well. I think it's green brushes for the soft one because this is rigid. It does a very good job of cleaning, but certain carpets it might be a bit too harsh on. So a soft roller is available for SIBO, so it will fit this machine. On the side here, we've got the four position manual height control. So we've got setting one for the shortest pile carpets, setting two for short to medium, setting three medium to long, and setting four for longer pile carpets. I'm going to try it, I think, on my particular carpet on setting three when I initially switch on. Just at the back, there's the foot operated handle release. So you can lower the handle to the operating position. And if you want to clean under low furniture, the cleaner goes pretty flat so you can clean under beds and coffee tables, etc. As I mentioned earlier in the video, I imported this Karcher from the USA via Amazon.com. This is a US spec machine, so it's not going to work in the UK without a step down transformer and also these plugs will not fit a standard three pin socket in a UK home. So I'm going to have to plug it in to my little box of tricks. We do have two American style sockets on the back and this is grounded so it does have an earth pin. So I can plug it into this and convert the 230 volts down to 120. So fingers crossed we should be able to see this cleaner in action. Well, despite a few niggles I had with assembly and a few teething troubles, after using this cleaner for the first time, I really like it. It's very light. It is a little bit on the noisy side, but not overly noisy. I'm wondering if it's the noise level that stops SIBO from selling this in the UK and Europe because the EU regulations state 80 decibels maximum. But to my ears, I think it's around 80 decibels or slightly lower. So I'm not really sure why we haven't got the official SIBO version in the UK. But if and when we do, I will definitely be buying the SIBO the one. 
because I don't want to have to keep plugging this Karcher into my step down transformer. I would like an official version. And I believe the official corded SIBO is white and black. It's got the white motor cover, which is better because black, I've got a few black SIBOs and they just show the scratches. You only have to touch them with a cloth and they mark. So a white one would be better, I think, in the UK. And if you're watching SIBO, at least a 10 meter mains cable, longer than the one supplied with this Karcher. But this is an unboxing assembly and first look. We've done that. My initial reaction after the few niggles, I do like it. If you're in the USA, these are around $200 from Amazon. If they've still got them, I'll put an Amazon affiliated link below the video. So you could try it out for yourself. $200 for a SIBO made machine is pretty good value in the USA. The, yes, I, I don't like the switch. It does work best if you just tilt the machine to one side and turn it on. Because if you try to do it with the machine in the upright position, it's a bit awkward. So just slightly tilt it and then it's easier to operate. Although a thumb operated switch would be far, far better, but I can get used to it. It's not too bad. This cleaner seems to perform well on this particular carpet on setting three, even setting four would be okay. It, it just pushes so easily. It's comfortable to use with it off. Yeah, it's quite hard to push with it off, but as soon as you turn it on, it's much easier so all in all yes especially don't import one of these if you're watching from the UK don't import one hang fire and hopefully within the next few months SIBO will launch this machine in the UK, an official UK version, because there is a gap in the market since we don't have Oric cleaners in the UK anymore. I think there is a gap in the market for a lightweight, basic, upright, mains powered vacuum cleaner. Some people still want mains power, they still want bags, they want something reminiscent of what they used to use, especially older people who can't manage something heavier. In fact, if it had been available when my mum was in the market for a lightweight cleaner, I would have probably chosen one of these in the SIBO brand, but unfortunately not available in the UK. So she got a GTEC Airam, which to this date she is still happy with. She really likes that. So that is my top recommendation for a lightweight upright style vacuum cleaner. You can check out my video for the Airam on my channel. So for now though, that's all I've got to say about this cleaner. If you have any comments or questions, please comment below and I'll see you all very soon for another look at this machine after I've used it for a few weeks and I'll do a proper pickup demonstration. So until the next time, thanks very much for watching and I'll see you all very soon for the next video. Bye for now.